Kutli, a little cluster of houses that can hardly be called a village. Location, 80 kilometers from Jaipur, National Railway number 8. Population, more than 30 sex workers. Their clients, the truck drivers who stop at the Dhaba. Together, unknowingly, a source of the spread of the world's most dangerous epidemic in India. An epidemic India is now at the forefront of. AIDS. Officially, the National AIDS Control Organization estimates about 50,000 HIV-infected people in India. However, non-governmental sources estimate 3 million infected people. This makes India home to the largest number of HIV-infected people in the world. Can we as a nation afford to ignore the runaway phenomenon of AIDS and HIV? What can we do to control this epidemic? Is prostitution the root of the spread of the virus? in the 80s, India viewed it as a purely Western phenomenon, a natural fallout of an alien decadent culture of free sex and drug abuse. Now, however, HIV has spread its tentacles in India. Initially, when we talked about AIDS, we first was denial. We said, OK, it doesn't happen in our country. It's a Western problem. It's not our problem. We are holy people, moral people, religious people, etc., etc. The states of Maharashtra, uh, especially the city of Bombay, is one which is badly affected. Then the northeastern state of Manipur, where the problem is more of in injecting drug use, that is badly affected. Then the southern states of uh, Tamil Nadu, and now Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka. And these are the areas which are showing a higher increase, a tendency of higher increase in the HIV. Girish is 28 years old. He has been HIV positive for seven years. I got infected through the sexual route of infection. That's how I got infected. Where was this? It was in Bombay. It was in Bombay. Um, what was your reaction when you found out that, that you were HIV positive? Reaction in the sense uh, I had a kind of vague feeling that it's going to be positive because I knew my behavior pattern practices and things like that. So I kind of suspected that uh, possibilities were quite high for me to kind of detect positive for the virus. In Mumbai, where tests have been conducted on sex workers, it has been found that almost half of these persons have been HIV positive. Itinerant truck drivers who are regular visitors to sex workers in villages like Dhantari and its neighbor Bandar Sindhari are now known to be a major conduit of the spread of the disease, literally turning the highways of India into the arteries of the infection. <laughs> Passing it on to other sex workers as well as their own wives indifferent to the existence of the virus, unwilling to even admit their own high-risk behavior.
इतनी जानकारी नहीं आपको आपके भाई बंधु ड्राइवर जो है उनको भी पता नहीं होगा इसके बारे में हाँ पता होंगे मैं लेकिन भाई बंधु से मैं पूछ भी नहीं सकता हूँ Early research prompted experts to label specific groups as high-risk groups for the rapid spread of HIV and AIDS. The two sets of uh, uh, groups which we talk of high risk is these commercial sex workers because the entire uh, the profession itself is a high risk profession. Second is the injecting drug users who use needles for exchange of uh, uh, drugs. So these are the two designated high risk groups we have. However. There is now a change in the perception of the path HIV follows. It is being increasingly recognized that our whole population is at high risk. The killer disease has moved far beyond red light areas and seedy highway dhabas to bourgeois neighborhoods and conservative households. Initially it was the sex workers, then their male clients got infected and then the male clients went back home and passed on the infection to their wives. and from the wives the children yes we have completed the circle it is now a community problem it's not a problem restricted to the so called high risk group in mumbai alone almost 75000 married people visit the red light areas every day the question arises how feasible is safe sex with sex workers and What are the linkages between commercial sex, gender disparity and the spread of AIDS? Girish despite warnings refused to practice safe sex on his sojourns into the red light districts of Mumbai. I have this strong kind of attitude of give a damn. I don't give a damn. Careless uh, care a damn attitude kind of thing which was very strong in me. And so I think that was the reason why I was not I was not like you know ready to listen to what anyone had to say, and I would just do as whatever I felt like. He now bitterly regrets this neglect. When it really comes to your own doorstep, or when it comes to you, uh, no, what I'm what I'm trying to say is, in my case, earlier I didn't pay attention to it, right? And then when it happened to me, then I paid attention to it. It has been proven medically that male to female transmission of HIV is 2 to 4 times more efficient as female to male transmission. Feminists and concerned individuals therefore deplore the targeting of prostitutes without reference to the equal responsibility of their clients. How can prostitutes get AIDS when they are confined in one particular place unless the clients give them that infection? so we start with the premise that it is the clients who bring the disease to the prostitutes and it is the clients again who go back to their homes and infect their wives so we cannot just say that it's the prostitutes alone who are responsible for spreading the disease the gender inequalities inherent in our society discourage the woman whether she is a wife or a prostitute from asking the man to wear a condom which is the only way to avoid infection our social structures are such that we inhibit a woman to take the initiative and uh, she may not even realize that she has to negotiate the use of condom also it is a transgression of violating the trust of a marriage between two people sex workers work in a terrible atmosphere they are people who are the most powerless in the entire structure there are madams there are primps there are brothel owners there are everybody else there now a pimp goes and gets a client and it's if the client is shooed away by the sex worker she is beaten up pimp would say i spent 2 hours getting this man and now you just shoot him off because you didn't want him to he didn't want to use a condom Dr IS Gilada runs a free condom distribution program in the red light district of Mumbai. How much have such programs helped? We need a sustained approach and that we have demonstrated in city of Mumbai where HIV infection which was going up heavily from 1985 86 onward till almost 1992 93 for last two years 3 years it is stable. 
it is not going up with the numbers uh, with which it was going up earlier. अपना गरीब से भी एक हो गया था ऐसे मर गया बच्चे ने इधर ही जेजी में से मर गए इसका बाद है ना बहुत ऐसा मरता है फिर भी है ना रुपए में चार आने बाद कम है मरने का ये जब भी ये निरुद्ध आपर्त है ना बीमारी थोड़ा कम It is impossible to gauge how many people are actually infected with HIV. And this problem is magnified in the case of sex workers. When you test them and you find out that one tested person is isolated, rejected, deserted and thrown out, then other women naturally will keep quiet. So there may be more women who are conscious now who have gone secretly taken a test and who know that they are infected but do not come out with it because they know nobody will want them the sex workers at dhantri only willing to speak to us off camera deny the existence of aids cases in their area however an ngo working in the area found several cases existing in one locality which was 6 km from here we tested them we took the samples six ladies and one client men and we were surprised when we received the report that all the seven people the six ladies and the client the men were having had uh, aids when we went to the next the second community we were so surprised that they had some serious skin disease inside and doctors told we cannot even believe how they are surviving themselves these women flatly insist that they never have sex without protection if so they are a very small percentage because the statistics cannot be denied an interview with 100 truckers revealed that 63% of them had never used a condom and many did not know where to get one aapko lagta hai ki ye log jab karte hain to apne condom use karte honge हाँ ये ये लगाया करते कभी कभी लगाते हैं और कोई वैसे वो आदमी होता है जो नहीं लगाता है वो अपने दिन में चलता है ऑन द जयपुर मुंबई हाईवे इट सेल्फ थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द ट्रक ड्राइवर्स टेस्टेड वो फाउंड टू बी एच आई वी पॉजिटिव वन बी टेस्टेड दिस वन मैन वॉज ए ट्रक ड्राइवर यू वॉज कमिंग टू दिस मैन टाइम टू टाइम वन यू वॉज पासिंग फ्रॉम जयपुर टू अजमेर Are coming from Jammu to Jaipur. He always going there, and I was told by that man that uh, he had the, before also he had the positive uh, HIV positive, so they are infected from these people. What remains to be addressed is this: What are the means to stop the deadly spread of HIV? A cure for the disease is nowhere in sight. Research is ongoing. and methods to prolong the lives of those infected emerge every day over the last 2 years there have been uh, rapid uh, progress in the area of drug development but we there are new drugs which have become available which are effective in uh, prolonging life or reduce or prolonging the period between people who are good infected and developing aids but we cannot consider them as cure i think we are long way off we have strategies now in which we use certain drugs like azt and many other drugs and if the mother is taking that for a period of time then the transmission to the child is greatly lessened so these new strategies are coming up in the west a cocktail of expensive drugs keeps the effect of the virus at bay but this option is virtually non-existent for the developing nations still coming to terms with the basic necessities for all governments are doing something to a import the drugs and import the drugs without uh, duty and things like that and i think a lot of advocacy work needs to be done with the pharmaceutical companies so that they reduce the price for third world countries otherwise we have no hope June 1998 Chennai An HIV positive man is burned to death by an angry mob as he is suspected of injecting innocent people 
with a syringe full of HIV-infected blood. Experts from the government and voluntary agencies unanimously agree on the importance of awareness in the fight against the dreaded scourge. Awareness uh, is of two types. One is general awareness, which we carry out through mass media, through electronic uh, media, through press, and also through meetings, etc. But more than that, what is important is the, the messages have to be interactive. In the sense, you have to address different groups, like as you said, the students, the youth, the street children, the women. See, each has to be addressed in a different way in an interactive fashion to give this message. Initially, nobody likes to listen to these things because they laugh it off because you are talking about um, sex and you are talking about your private parts and things like that. But the moment they become conscious of the fact that it is something serious, then they listen. They have listened very seriously and taken our brochures, looked at our posters. Everybody wants to But the multimedia blitz to promote AIDS awareness notwithstanding, there is little to show how aware people are about it and the related truths. An irrational fear psychosis fed by half-truths and myths has arisen. This care that sometimes comes out of rumours, etc., it is because of still lack of knowledge among some of the people about how HIV AIDS can be transmitted. For example, the rumour in Delhi that a needle, you know, just by picking a needle you cannot transmit HIV AIDS. The needle has to be, blood has to be drawn afresh from somebody's body and then injected. Then only the virus can be transmitted. So these, some of these uh, uh, basic vital information, it's still not, people are still not able to uh, access to uh, uh, this information. Hardest of all to change is the attitude of the population, including supposedly educated medical personnel towards the disease and the physical and mental suffering of those inflicted with it. John is a 35-year-old HIV-infected man. I just came to know that uh, I am infected with HIV. I think it's one year back. And uh, this, it was through what? How did you get infected? We yeah, are sharing needle with others. He faces resentment and discrimination in every aspect of his life. I find people react very badly to me. I mean, uh, there is some kind of disgusting. So even in the hospital, I had many, many bad experiences since I'm working as a care group in Sahara. So I have to go to hospital to take some patient. So I had many, many bad experiences in, in the hospital also. Even in the society, it's, I, I still don't want to uh, express about my disease, but uh, I don't know what to do. I really stuck over here. There is a, a, a very good group among the medical community who are very motivated, who are doing excellent job. But there are still a large number of doctors who still think it is not their job to treat an AIDS patient. This requires constant education, constant uh, sensitization of the medical community. Not only medical community, in the paramedical staff, who are the nurses who are working in the hospitals. So we have these programs of continuing medical education for the doctors, nurses and other paramedical staff. The government awoke to the need for a special strategy to combat the menace of the virus and in 1987 established the National AIDS Control Organization or NACO. The em emphasis right now that NACO has been giving on the program is to decentralize it to the state, district and field level. 
You see, it cannot be run as a centralized program in NACU. It has to be decentralized to the field level. The National AIDS Program has put in place uh, various strategies and interventions in all different states in India. As a result of that, uh, the studies indicate that general knowledge of people with regard to HIV has increased quite enormously. AIMS has an NGO aid cell to coordinate the activities of NGOs and provide sensitization training to medical personnel. Our basic role is to train the NGOs, A, to be able to integrate HIV AIDS into their development activities. We in the cell, we see AIDS as a development problem, as a social problem and not as a health problem. And B is we are also in, uh, involved in training doctors, paramedical workers, etc. And C, we do a lot of research. Research in terms of sexual behavior research, working with youth groups, research with intervention programs. Observers feel that it is imperative to inspire initiatives from within the community for the prevention and treatment of the virus. To bring about behavior change, what we promote is that there has to be interpersonal approach. Uh, we have to, uh, on one-on-one -on -one basis, provide information. And that information, that can be provided primarily by NGOs, particularly those who are based at the community level. Let each community worker, as she continues to work, in organizing women for basic rights like water, removal of garbage in schools, etc. Let her also talk in terms of health. Let her talk in terms of protection for the woman, you know, so that she uses the condom, is able to teach her husband to use the condom. So uh, AIDS prevention has become a part of our community organization training program. In this vein, the Indian Health Organization, headed by Dr. Gilada, trained sex workers themselves to make their peers aware. Those who come to the village, I tell them to understand that they are not going to be able to do it. They don't have to be able to do it. They don't have to be able to do it. If they don't have to be able to do it, they will be able to do it. But they don't have to be able to do it. We understand that they are not going to be able to do it. Ram Sahai Purohit runs an NGO in Duddu on the Jaipur Ajmer Highway. He provides a home for the children of the sex workers in nearby villages like Dhantri and Bandar Sindri. The prostitutes send their children, especially girls, away from the atmosphere of exploitation. We started a school here seven years ago. We had two minibus going every morning. And taking back, collecting them, there were about 70 children. And our late afternoon, we were putting them there. Then, after two, three years, the mothers themselves asked us, what's the use to send them back? Because when they come back, they stay in the same environment, same situation. But the problem was the finance. So I contacted some international agencies and some national agencies, some donors, and we got some funds. So we constructed a house for them. The children are taught about the menace of AIDS and the importance of the use of condoms by their mothers. Do you teach AIDS in school? Yes, I teach AIDS in school. 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 There is no way of knowing how many really are infected. But the rising number is frightening. Statistics are unreliable. Observers ask why official numbers and those available from NGOs differ so radically. There is no effective reporting system for HIV AIDS because everybody who gets infected doesn't know, first of all. Even if he knows, he doesn't reveal it. And the doctor also who treats that patient, he doesn't notify. Because you must appreciate that most of the people who contact the disease, they don't always go to the government settings. They go to a private clinic or a private nursing home, etc. Those cases are not reported to the government. By the beginning of the next century, one in every 10 sexually active adults in India will be HIV positive. Are you 100% confident about 
the men in your home? Are you confident that your teenage son is not going there? Are you confident that your brother-in-law is not going there or your husband is not going there? Let's not forget that in anybody else's home, the man who goes there is also a relative like this. And if each one of us went into denial, this is what happens. So we've got to wake up. We've got to set up social structures. We've got to learn to accept truth. Is there a need for more drastic changes in the policy and thinking on AIDS control? Since the major cause of the spread of the disease is through commercial sex workers, is legalization, decriminalization, or at least recognition and regularization of prostitution the answer? If you are only thinking in terms of this problem of AIDS, legalization may help. But it is not going to reduce the number of entrants. You see? So when you take the whole problem together, then I would say legalization is not going to help. I won't say that you know, giving a license is going to solve the problem, but hopefully it will streamline. Hopefully it will help us approach a group of people to get a handle on the situation. Hopefully it will help us contain the spread of HIV. Legalizing prostitution is not really the answer. The answer is to provide basic minimum health facilities to people. And when you say people, even commercial sex workers are a part of the population. However, in this scenario, it must be understood that although commercial sex workers are one of the largest groups suffering from the virus, there are other means of the disease spreading. Pointing fingers at these already victimized minorities is not the answer. Everything dirty and evil and infectious is associated with those who we segregate. And therefore, when AIDS spread and it was clear that sex workers had something to do with it, automatically the blame fell on them. That was a thing of the past. Today, nobody is targeting the sex workers only for this. We are having a number of programs in general population. We are addressing students, we are addressing youth, we are addressing street children, we are addressing women. So it's not the sex workers anymore who are targeted for this. The futility of importing solutions from the West and instead the need for initiatives specific to the Indian situation has also been recognized. It's uh, very easy to bring in from the West and talk about it. It's not relevant because our social structures are so different and so inherent of our systems that any kind of superimposition might, in fact, give us a setback. So uh, we have been very cautious in our approach, but at the same time, we need to combine it with speed. Now I think it's time to understand and analyze the gaps in our knowledge. Like, you know, a college student would say, I know everything about HIV, and the next question is, why is it not transmitted through a mosquito? So obviously there, is, there are certain gaps. A school ch child saying, yeah, I know everything about HIV, but when a question is asked, would you sit next to a person who is HIV positive? No, I wouldn't do that. You know, attitudinal changes are required. All over the society, they are looking at this disease as somebody else's problem, not my problem. And so long as that attitude continues, it will have a problem. Being directly linked to a taboo subject like sex and the dreaded phenomenon of drug abuse, AIDS, HIV challenge the very basis of family ties and rip open societal attitudes towards issues like sexuality and power relations between the sexes. AIDS and HIV are seen as a socially unacceptable, dirty disease. Identified with and blamed on those living on the social and economic fringes of society. But no longer. India is sitting on a ticking AIDS bomb that has, unless contained, the power to decimate the entire population.